What's going on everyone? 2AM. Last time we began creating a female character from scratch, creating our own reference sketch, and bringing the head features to life in 3D. Today, we're gonna model the hair of the character. To be specific, we're replicating the 2D anime look instead of the usual, you know, textured VTuber style. And so I'm gonna be using techniques that are more efficient for achieving this. Like for example, the highlights on the bangs are procedurally generated. And this way, we don't even have to texture or UV unwrap anything. Anyways, to begin, I am using both the plane method and the curve method to model the hair on this character. The curve method is the one that's commonly shown in tutorials where you link the shape of a circle curve to a path curve and manipulate the path curve to easily and intuitively create hair strands. Don't worry, I'll explain this more later. I use the curve method for the curly parts at the bottom of the hair. For the rest of the hair on this character, I use the plane method, which is, as the name suggests, creating planes to flatten model the hair strands. I find that this method has a lot of advantages, especially in a scenario like this. It allows for very precise control of how you want the strands to be shaped and placed. Because unlike the curve method where you're controlling the points on the path curve, you can literally control every vertice. And sometimes this is needed to get certain hair strand shapes. It also potentially uses a lot less vertices because of course they're just 2D planes instead of the 3D meshes that the curve method creates. So here we are, we duplicated the head mesh to create a hairnet and we're modeling the front bangs using the plane strand method. If you never used this method before, it's pretty straightforward. In object mode, add a plane to your scene, rotate it to face you, go into edit mode, select all the vertices, right click and subdivide it, Extend this from the bottom vertices until we get a 2x5 shape. Use Ctrl R and scroll wheel up to loop cut this twice. And now use Shift Alt left click to select all of the outer edges, like so. Then press Shift E and drag your mouse to the right until the crease on the top left says 1. Then under modifiers, let's add a subdivision surface modifier. And because we've creased the edges, the hair strand will smooth out nicely, but the edges will remain sharp. Let's scale down the tip of the hair strand gradually, like so. And for this top edge, let's bring it in because this is where it will connect with the scalp. So move it, loop cut it once, and move that loop cut up. Don't forget to shade smooth. Let's also scale down the root. And one thing I highly recommend, let's select all of the middle vertices. Deselect the ones at the edge though. You want to push out all of the middle ones so that it doesn't look flat. Gives the hair strand that volume. Now just tweak it whatever way you want. I changed the subdivisions from 1 to 2 because it was still looking a little jagged. This method is pretty powerful and flexible and I'm about to show you some of the things that you can do with just a simple hair strand setup like this. So this is the process for our character starting with the front bangs. I created the plain strands and I duplicated it keeping the original so we can duplicate the strands we make but we can also keep an original copy just in case we want to go back to the very basic. The hair is middle parted so we're starting the middle and working our way outwards and as I mentioned earlier an advantage of this method is that the strand can end in different shapes like this scimitar shape or even a block shape it doesn't always have to be that pointy end and this contributes a lot to um, achieving that 2D anime look. I do my best to copy the individual strands from my reference, and at the same time as the hair radiates outward, I'm following the rotation of the circumference of the head. As I mentioned in the first video, there's no problem with tracing, so if you want to overlap your reference and trace model instead, that's completely fine, and this is probably one of the better methods to do it with. Just remember to consider that it's in 3D now. You can also duplicate and mirror strands that will be symmetrical, but adjusting the mirror strands goes a long way because when it looks too perfectly symmetrical, it loses a little bit of its charm. All right, here we just slapped on the color using link materials so that we can uh, apply the material to all the strands at once. Overlapped it with the reference really quick to see if we're on course. So far, looking pretty good. Here I'm just making sure the hair parts nicely in the middle, making sure there's no awkward gaps in the scalp. Here I applied the line art modifier early, just so I know that it looks good with the lines. And if it doesn't, we can make tweaks at the early stages. And let me quickly show you how to set up the line art. All right, so place all the meshes that you would like to have the line art on in one collection. And it doesn't matter if there are multiple meshes or you already joined them. I'm gonna shift A, add a grease pencil stroke object, creates a squiggly line that you can just put aside. But just select that object and go into its modifiers and add a line art modifier. Source type collection, Collection will be the folder that you put all the meshes that you want lined in. 
Layer is lines and material is black because once you go black, you never go back. Play around with thickness and opacity until you get the line that you want. Now this line art thing actually has a billion different options which we can't all get into. But for 99% of use cases, if you just tick off contour and edge types and nothing else, then you should be good. Now under the line art modifier, I also have a few other modifiers and this just, you know, adds a little spiciness to the line. It's very subtle, it just adds a little bit of jitter. See how like the line is not perfectly aligned to the mesh? Not sure if you can notice that, maybe I should turn it up a little more. It helps sell the hand-drawn look by making it not too perfect. But feel free to pause here if you want to copy these modifiers and their settings. Line art is camera angle dependent, so if you want to see how it looks like as you rotate it, you have to click camera to view in the view tab. That way when you rotate it in your camera view, you can see the line art follow the mesh. Now moving on, this is a curve method used for the curly hair strands at the bottom. And we just shift A and add two curves. One is a circle curve and the other one is a path curve. Since the hair strands are actually circular, I don't have to change the circle curves shape. In both curve objects in this green properties tab, I'm gonna change resolution preview U to a lower number, anywhere from three to five. Otherwise it's gonna have a million vertices when it's converted into a mesh. For the path curve under geometry object, I drop the circle curve. Shrink down the end with Alt S. Now I'm just gonna move around these points and or subdivide to create more points until I get the shape that I want for those hair strands. Again, it'll be a little weird if you just created a front reference but you don't have a side reference as you're gonna have to now decide how this hair strand lies in 3D space. Just gonna mirror this and repeat on the other side and we'll do another pair of these uh, curved strands. So a total of four curved strands around the back of the head. Now, if you've noticed, I'm not following too close to my reference at this point. For me, in terms of personal projects, how the final product looks matters much more than following the reference one for one. Let's close up these plain modeled strands right here. At this point, I was looking around all the angles and saw it was not really balanced in some areas. So we're gonna fix that soon. But first let's close up the back with a single plane modeled hair strand. So the issue was when looking from like a three quarters angle, it looks kind of flat near the front. And so we fixed that a little. We added more volume to these flat strands by pushing out the middle segments. Then toned down the size of the back hair strands so that, you know, everything's a little more balanced. That's 90% of the hair modeling done, but to really give it that complete look, we have to add these little details. I like to extrude out smaller strands from the hair strands themselves, because you see a lot of that in 2D. To set this up on your plane model strands, just apply the subdivision surface first, horizontally select a few vertices like this and extrude them out. I turned on face orientation here, this is also important. As you can see, not all of our hair strands face the same way. And also when you do extrude out, it does have some weird behaviors, sometimes it will go out the wrong way. And in these cases, the two functions you need are recalculate outside and also flip. Both of these are found in the mesh normals menu and you may want to add these to your quick favorites for easy access. And it's the same thing as the flat modeling you did earlier. Extrude it out, shrink the ends, and use Control R to loop cut in between. Then curve it out. And here, we're gonna fix the normals or the face orientations. To do this, we simply go to each individual hair strand, select all the vertices, and use the flip function. And once everything's blue, that means everything's facing the correct way. Just even two or three small strands made it look a lot more complete. Look at that. Another way to add small details is to use a knife tool to carve out these little um, these little splits. So just go down with the knife tool, delete the faces that were left. And you can even um, tweak the ends a bit like so. Just another nice little touch that you can add so that it doesn't look repetitive. So here it is again. Select a new strand, apply the subdivision in object mode. Go in with the knife tool. Cut out that line, delete the vertices, and make that pointy. And of course, you can also do this on curved strands after you've converted them into a mesh. Don't be thinking you're locked into using these only on the flat modeled strands. All right, the sides and back could still use a little more detail, but for the purposes of this video, this should be enough. 
So let's start setting up the anisotropic or the highlights in the center of the front strands. And to prep for this, I'm just gonna clone the hair material and apply it to the front strands because I don't want the highlights to go around the back for now. The only other prerequisite are the UVs, but you don't even have to unwrap them. So for each of these front strands, I'm just gonna go into the UV editing tab and make sure they're in this square formation. So I'll press A, select all of the vertices and see where they are in the UV map. If they don't cover the whole thing like this, I'll just move it up and scale it. In any case, just line up the top of the UVs with the top of the UV map, because that means the roots will be at the top of the UV map. And when we add the highlights, they'll be centered properly on the hair strand. Okay, this is the shader. Um, I just noticed like this is going to take a long time to explain. So I'm just going to have it available as a download on my Patreon for free. You don't have to um, be a patron to download it. It's just a watered down version of the Lightning Boy Studio shader. So, so credit to Lightning Boy Studio, obviously. You can see at the top, moving this will control the upper and lower. You can adjust the colors here. If you've textured your image, you can just place an image texture here and then connect it to A. So here, basically, you just control it with the contrast until you get the shape that you want. And then here is another noise texture, which just splits it up so that you get these little spaces in between. You can control that with brightness to uh, adjust the amount of spacing, spaces, also scale. And then the shadows are just plugged in here as well. So that's the shadow color. Um, and it's set up in a way so that, you know, the, the highlights and the shadows can overlap. So, so if the hair is under shadow, it can't be highlighted just because like it makes sense, right? <laughs> but yeah, let's not try to explain everything. Uh, you can watch the lightning boy studio shader videos, the tune shader videos, if you want to take a deeper dive into this, or you can just download the file for free. Anyways, that's probably going to be it for this one. Feel free to look at the other hair videos if you wanted to go for that more um, painted texture look. As of course, for this one, the shading is not very complicated. We didn't even have to paint any textures or unwrap any UVs. You know, sometimes simpler is better, uh, depending on the art style that you're trying to achieve. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see how this model turns out when we start adding the body and the clothing and we start rigging it up, things like that. One last thing I'll note is we'll probably change this to sphere shading instead of the usual normals for the hair, just so it'll complement the 2D look better. And we'll show you what that looks like next time. If this video helped you out, feel free to like and subscribe to support the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.